uh, select board meeting to order. First up, we have an interview of Mr. Phillips for the Finance Committee. Is that you? All righty. Do you want to come, come on up? up? Good evening. How are you? Good. Do you want to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in the Finance Committee? So I heard about the Finance Committee. Uh, again, my name is Tom Phillips. I live on Prosper Road in town. Uh, split time for the last 14 years uh, between here and work. Retired 18 months ago, two years ago, uh, from the financial services business. Um, dealt with a few nonprofits and a few for-profits. Uh, I have a limited experience in municipal finance. I have uh, a lot of experience in uh, corporate finance. Um, I heard about the finance committee as an information source for the select board and trying to understand what the numbers are. And I have a personal issue where I believe don't criticize anybody until you're willing to spend your time. If you spend your time, then you can actually say something. So I just want to get under the hood. Uh, I did review the auditor's report from uh, a year ago. Um, and uh, I've been around a lot of balance sheets and income statements. Um, you know, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not the best, but it's uh, what I did. All right. And uh, I think my skill sets were relatively narrow, but I can add, subtract, and do the math. Might be a good help. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're familiar with the time commitment and the meeting schedule? Um, I sat in with um, and John, uh, the first meeting I sat there, he was trying to project the amount of time her committee, what he thought it was going to be. I thought that was an appropriate assessment of what that was going to be. Um, having said that, um, until I would be confirmed, I, I didn't think it was appropriate that I talked to John about any specifics or anybody else on that committee. Um, it, it, there may be information there that is private, and I thought that was a uh, bridge too far, candidly. Okay. And is there two positions? I believe it's two. Yeah. Two. Oh. I thought there was one, but okay. At one point, there was two, and we haven't filled. They've always had one vacancy, I believe. And they thought yeah, there was one added. Line, so they have two vacancies. I think so. <clears throat> I would move we appoint Tom Phillips to the Finance Committee. I would second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. For your uh, I'll reach out to John and kind of try to get some type of download. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks for your help. For additions and deletions, um, we have grand list. Uh, request from the listers office. Yep. So basically, um, our listers are all set with all the information uh, to upload uh, for the grand list. Uh, the state of Vermont is using new software this year, and there are issues with it. Surprise, surprise. Um, our listers are confident that they can get the stuff done, but they've been advised to press an extension just in case the software is not available for them to upload in uh, a timely fashion. So that's what their request is in front of you. Yeah. Okay. Did we all see that email? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion to extend the list for 30 days for their uh, letter. Second. Okay. Motion made by Ray, second by Carrie to approve the request to extend the deadline for the grand list by 30 days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, then I have an addition. Um, 
We'll do it yep. an hour later. Yeah, um, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the Tuesday morning meetings in June, July, and August. Okay. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And I think that's all we had for additions. <clears throat> Are there any citizen comments for anything that's not on the agenda tonight? Uh, on Antonio? Muted. Antonio, you're muted. There. Okay. Um, I just wanted to insert here and remind you all that, if you don't already know, that I am trying my hardest to locate land on which to put a dog park. And I know I've spoken with Eric about this, but no, no, nobody else there. But I just wanted to, to alert you to that so um, and let you know that I'm trying to find land. And um, if you have any, um, I'm concerned, uh, if you have any funds coming up, and I saw a notice on this agenda about the uh, ARPA funds. And um, I just wanted to, again, get your brains uh, at least remembering the fact that this is coming coming to you at some point. That's it. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Uh, Eric, manager's report. Yeah, uh, just a few things. Uh, one, uh, as asked by the select board, uh, Ray and I have each since our meeting, uh, planning agenda going forward. Um, one of our conversation is uh, for me to meet individually with the select board members about agenda items they'd like to see in the next year. Um, because it's planning, it will not be breaking any open meeting laws. Uh, so I'll be doing that in the next coming weeks to kind of get a, a feel of what the boards want going forward. Uh, so that's something just to check back on, on that we said it would be doing. Uh, next, um, based on a suggestion from uh, Kerry, I reached out about the Southwood stock facility and uh, if painting was an option as another uh, cost measure. Uh, they recommend painting not be an option as the facility is going to be wet and therefore it would not be a good option for paint. They recommend staining it so they don't look at a, a price for staining it and come back with that as well. Um, and I believe the goal is to have the conversation at the June meeting, uh, potentially of what we wanted, at least first steps for the, the, the redesign. Uh, next, just an update. Uh, the plan and zoning department um, has hired an assistant. Um, they're going to be starting in early June. Uh, currently, we've contracted them out to do some work before they get here. They're moving up here from Texas. Um, so they're working with Stephen part time to get some stuff going. So when they start full time in June, they'll be ready to go. Um, so the families are from Texas. I believe they have a place short term already uh, in the area and hoping to buy in Woodstock or somewhere else. Uh, and she comes with some experience in plan and zoning as well. She's doing some work down there, plan and zoning. I think it was. Uh, and finally, um, the select board got my uh, email last week with summer hours. Uh, starting a Memorial Day weekend uh, town hall will go to 12 o'clock through uh, Labor Day on Fridays. Um, that gets us in line with all the other departments. Currently, on Fridays, the Listers Office, the Town Clerk, and Planning Zoning are also 12 o'clock. Um, so this kind of puts us in line with everyone else, so it'll be less confusion for our residents coming in. Um, with that said, uh, my contact information will be on the door. Uh, I've been trained in the work that would need to get done in case there's an emergency anytime between 12 and 4 30 on a Friday, I'll be able to pull the necessary reports for any residents. Uh, so no services will be locked in for anyone in that in that time frame. Um, so everything should be covered. Um, but I just wanted to make that public. Uh, we're putting together a sign that will go on the door downstairs where I'll list the hours, and then another sign will have my contact information on it as well. Um, and that's all I have for my general reports. If there's any comments or questions, I'm happy to take them. If not, we can move to the financial reports. Uh, so as normal attaches the financial report out of our numeric system, um, I was also able to uh, send a projection to the board, kind of where I foresee us going through June 30th. Um, that projection has us ending the year in a small surplus. Um, RFC changed, emergencies 
can come up. Um, but the goal is that we'll end uh, with a small surplus in Q30 based just solely on expenses uh, that was without budget for, not on expected revenue. So that could be higher, lower if revenue came in uh, under, under budget. And again, I want to thank Susan for emailing some questions ahead of time so we get the answers for her in a timely fashion. Um, yep. License renewals. We have Sante, we have Village Butcher, Village Inn, Wixock Farmers Market, Mechanic Street, LLC, and Jackson House. Uh, one comment or two comments on these. Uh, one, uh, again, Susan and I have been talking with the state about the board's unhappiness with the way the permits are coming across. Um, the state is aware of it. It's an issue they're working on uh, with their software company. Um, so they are aware of the concerns. Currently, right now, there's nothing they can do about it, but I hope by next year to have a better system we can run in for the boards to have more information. Um, and then one other thing I'll say is the first one on the list, Sante, um, typically when a business has a license come up, the police department pulls any outstanding um, Tickets or anything, the Sunday business owner has a few of the work being done. Uh, they're aware of it. They're going to come in tomorrow morning with a check to pay off the fees. So my recommendation for that one would just be to approve it potentially. That's something that they'll be paid off tomorrow morning. I would move that we approve E through F and A conditioned on the payments being made and all conditioned on the assumption that the state's reviewing the permit. Okay. There's I'll second it. Motion is made by Susan, second by Ray to approve liquor license rules B through F and with the and then A with the condition of payment for outstanding uh, bills to the town and all of them with the uh, understanding that they're in compliance with state regulations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Uh, looking at some of the requests that we saw heard last month in April um, with our ARPA expenditures, we've already approved um, breathing apparatus for the fire department. Um, kind of working at these, looking at these numbers. Um, Looking at three hundred thousand dollars for Carlton Hill, um, forty-two thousand dollars for the wastewater treatment plant, fifteen thousand to Connecticut River Conservancy, fifteen thousand for Thompson Senior Center, uh, ten thousand for the beautification of the South Woodstock water treatment plant, and two thousand for sign package. It still leaves a uh, significant remainder. Um, I think this is a very good uh, starting point. And I, I know we, the town hall rejuvenation is left blank because yeah. we don't have any proposal from them and we don't know that they have a project that can be completed in the requisite time period. But it doesn't mean we're not interested in funding that with with the remainder that we have. So Jill? I have a question. Um, I may have missed something, but how can publicly discuss how this money is to be shared? Yes. And I that. Yeah, we, we had presentations uh, in April. We had presentations, oh. but I didn't get anything. Well, no, that's what we're doing now. We have we have a proposal in front of us, but... So where's the proposal from? A discussion of two members. Okay, so this would be a perfect time to... Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Yep. Could you provide those numbers? Um, actually, you can, if you can, have, let me share my screen. I can pull up the Excel sheet on the... Larger screen. It should be good now. Was this in the board's uh, agenda packet? I didn't see it. No, it was. No. no, it was just listed as a discussion. I mean, just as a general note, very frustrated. Come to a meeting. 
without having the information in front of us. I had no idea that that preliminary decisions had been made. I would have spent time studying, but I don't have a chance. So I, I would really ask you to make sure that the, the agenda and the packet include all of the relevant information. Thank you. Yep. So maybe, maybe they come up with one thing. Can we just say if someone wants to speak, maybe we invite them up with the microphone so people online will not be able to hear. I have one here if you want a paper, my hard copy. Thanks. I can't read. So, Joe, Joe would like to come up. Yeah, Joe, go ahead. Come up. So I've been thinking about this since the discussion, and I strongly recommend that the least sexy projects are funded, and I strongly recommend that the projects that will not get money from elsewhere are funded. So, for example, the Thompson Center is a very worthy cause, but the Thompson Center has many wealthy individuals who are prepared to contribute. And so I don't, whereas I don't think this wastewater treatment <laughs> project is sexy or has many other places to get money from. So I think it should go to those kind of projects first. I don't know what, I can't remember what the sign package was, but I think that spending 2000 here and 10,000 there is frittering away money that can be put to a few large projects. And I think that might be better uses of it. Well, the Almost half of the money is going to the Carlton Hill Road project, mm -hmm. and that feels like a that feels like a worthy one. Yeah. I think I'm a little disappointed at the wastewater treatment plant um, project because it's getting so little, and yet it's so costly. Even the first stages of it, and I just think that when other people, when projects can get money from elsewhere, it shouldn't be part of ARPA money. And Joe, the one thing I'll say with the wastewater uh, treatment uh, just is because. The town has not voted on a bond yet. We don't actually know when the construction could happen. So we are limited with the time frame of offer, how much money can be allocated by the time our funds need to be spent by. But isn't the first stage of the um, doing the plans something that we can spend money on? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. There's something that can so be spent there. Bill for that? Um, I'd have to, I don't know if you first. switch to sheet three, it's not, necessar it's not necessarily. Um, can you read it for us? <laughs> Uh, so survey 15,000, geotech investigation 15,000, asbestos lead paint east testing 5,000, historic preservation, architecture investigation 5,000, wetland screening 2,000, and that's a total of the $42,000. What about the engineer prices? Uh, some of that are we are paying with a, a loan uh, that we wrapped into the bond, uh, but there's also other things that could be. I'm not saying 42 is a pack, I'm just saying. You know, some right. of the some of the projects it's, will it's be it's a loan, and so it's going to come on our taxes. Anything that we loan for will come on property taxes. We're trying not to increase property taxes. So why are we giving money to the Thompson Center? Why are we spending money on site? What just questions to ask about each project? Yeah. And why are we giving money to a conservation commission? There's loads of places to get money for conservation. I looked at this as what benefits overall taxpayers, certainly the Carlton Hill project. Yes, I wouldn't argue with that one. And the because signs do. We need, we we need road signs. I think that there's yeah. two so, so for instance, operating budget expenses. This um, I I I just remake my point. This is very special money. I think it should go to very unusual projects like Carlton Hill, like wastewater treatment plant. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, I have to echo what Jill said. I think the state of Vermont did a very good job at making sure that the ARPA money they got to spend went towards large projects that couldn't otherwise be funded and or were, were building capacity for the future. There's a lot of nickel and diming in here that I just don't see as benefiting the town as a whole. For example, the, the Connecticut River Conservancy, I'm all for blowing up dams, but that is not the responsibility of the town government of Woodstock. Rewilding rivers is a state 
and or a federal and or private institutions. And if they can't get the money to do it, and if an incredibly wealthy foundation with lots and lots of revenue sources can't, can't contribute to that, then I say it's not the job of the town of Woodstock to do that. Um, I, I don't know the numbers, obviously, on the Carlton Hill project. That at least sounds like an infrastructure project that is going to hopefully solve a problem for the, a long time. From my perspective, that's where you should be putting your money, is, is projects that benefit the town and projects that are an investment in the future, and not projects that should not, that the that are not a responsibility of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Hello, can you hear me? Good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering, we had um, Sustainable Woodstock have put a proposal um, out for weatherization and other energy projects for low to moderate income uh, households in Woodstock. And I don't see anything here. So uh, where do we stand with consideration for those pro that project for our funding? Uh, we didn't consider it in this round of numbers, uh, but there is a remainder that we could consider it in the future. Okay, so you will be considering the additional projects with the remainder of that money? Yes. Okay, thank you. The one thing I want to speak to with regard to sustainable Woodstock is the one thing that struck me about all these nonprofits that came to us is that they're all doing some fundraising toward their own projects. And I am a little frustrated with sustainable Woodstock that they don't seem that they just seem to come to us for their money or the EBC. And I would love to see you reaching out to the community and doing some fundraising. For ARPA, that has to be. I believe uh, allocated by 2024 and spent by 2025. Yes. Um, so what? We'll, what I guess I would propose having heard from the floor is Carlton Hill is um, the top priority. So if we suspend or you know continue our discussion for some of the other projects, um, but vote on that one tonight. And the the airpack. Oh, with with airpacks we've already voted. Yeah. Already voted on. yeah. And actually, that's probably going to be slightly less than the one fifteen. I just wanted to round up to be safe. And I'm aware that other towns are giving the nonprofits in town that benefit everyone in the town money. And I don't, I disagree that it's not appropriate. You know, the Thompson serves a ton of people and you know, the dam project I think is a worthy project. So but I think just give my two cents there. And I'll just, sorry, just uh, when it comes to nonprofits, uh, if the town decides to allocate money towards them, we just to make sure that they go through the federal procurement process because if the town's audited by the treasury that's what they'll look for and so we make sure that you it's fifteen thousand dollars that follow the right procedure so it's an oversight on them make sure they understand the, the steps you have to go through and i i think we probably the sign package i know it's two thousand dollars seems nickel and dime that is um a project that we can do that will benefit taxpayers in the end um there's about 10 no parking signs down on 106 in south woodstock by gmha that are completely sun faded um, there's some that have to go up on uh, Peterkin Hill uh, and some others around town on uh, River Street that are faded for no parking. Um, the budget spent this, for this year. A highway budget. Okay. It, I mean, it, it's something that does. Operating expense, not extortion expense. There's the highway budget is huge, and it signs in the not signs should be part of that regular budget. It's, it's not something that's gonna tip the scales on the ARPA money at the end of the day. So I, I, I would say the board has presented their our information, there's been discussion. So if the board wants to approve one or any of the projects, 
or make a motion to, they, they should. If they don't want to postpone, they're more welcome to as well. I would entertain a motion of. I would move we approve the project as stated. Seconded. Okay. okay. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the projects as stated. So that'd be. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So all of, all of these. Okay. All of these. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. The motion carries. So we're sorry. Ben's also in a school board meeting, so we're a little bit. So, sixes and sevens. So we're moving to approve all of these here. Yes. And uh, remind me how much is left of the ARPA funds after this? Yeah. After yeah. this would be 117000 117000 yeah. You're $85.47. I'm abstaining from the Thompson part of it. Okay. You're abstaining from the Thompson part of it, Susan? I'm on the board of the Thompson, so I'm... I'm just, I should have said I should have had someone else make the motion. But I don't feel like vote. And, and Thompson is the Thompson is the only nonprofit that we have on no, the Connecticut River Conservancy, the and that's for the dam. Yes. So, and if there's indecision with the board, you can take a motion one by one on these as well. That's also an option. Mm -hmm. And then people can abstain from ones that they're. All right, All right so we should do it. That's good. Four people just voted yes. Yeah. We procedurally probably should okay. re motion so that Tom's. And the SWWWTP is. The South Woodstock Water Treatment. Okay, the beautification. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, so I think we need to take them one by one. Re motion so we can carve out Thompson Senior so uh, Susan can recuse for that. Yeah. But entertain a motion for. Make a motion for Thompson so $300,000. Second. Second. Okay. Motion by Ray, second by Mary for Carlton Hill for 300000 All in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion carries. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion for $42,000 for those. Wastewater treatment, main wastewater treatment plant. Second. Motion's made and seconded for the wastewater treatment plant for 42,000. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You know, just keep, keep going. 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 I'll make a motion for the Connecticut River Conservatory for $15,000. Second. Second by Susan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any? I'm opposed. You're opposed? Okay. All right. Motion carries four to one for the Connecticut River Conservancy. I'll make a motion to find the Thompson Senior Center for $15,000. Is there a second? Sure. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion's Aye. made and seconded for Thompson Senior Center. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm just so torn. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say I'm opposed at this round because I, I think it's I, I don't think we can cherry pick our nonprofit. So at this point, I am opposed. OK, so the motion uh, is three in favor, one opposed with one mm -hmm. recused and that motion carries. Uh, next on the list is South Woodstock. I'll make a motion to fund the South Woodstock wastewater treatment plant certification of uh, $10,000. Second. Uh, motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And for $2,000 for signs packages. 
I'll make the motion to two thousand dollars to sign packages. Second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. New business is um, we received late a packet from was it from the engineers? Yes. For the town hall building committee update. We didn't get this in time. Um, I haven't had a chance. I haven't looked at it. We haven't had a chance to look at this. This is probably something we should put off till next month. Yeah, please go to. We're not looking for any action mm -hmm. on it. Um, this is simply to update you. So um, we can wait till next month, but we do have the uh, consultant available to kind of walk you through it, which, and we'd like to come back in a couple months' time, anyways. I haven't been able to review it. I just saw it today. We've always requested that material be provided to the board ahead. Um, I understand that. So, um, I'm sorry I wasn't part of that. I'm filling in for Alita who's out of town. But we, we have the packet now. We can go through it and it hasn't been provided in the you know to the public or you know, right. Town. We can, can we put well, a link we, on the town website? <laughs> Our intent was to try to share it with all of you, and then we mm -hmm. wanted to ask to post it on the website because we felt that way you'd sort of have some sense if any of the uh, residents contacted you, you'd have some introduction to it. So. Up to the board. I mean, you can update, they can update where they're at. That won't be an issue as long as no vote on it. Um, or if you want to keep with precedent and tell them to come back next June as well. I'm assuming it'd be more than five minutes. Oh, yeah, it's probably 10, but it's not much more than that. You know what? I, I would just assume listen to it instead of pushing it down the road and then making. Okay. I'm not crazy about it, and we'll give you 10 minutes, I think, but. I think it should, I think it would be helpful to have a high level overview, and then we can all spend some time with it, and post it on the website so everybody can see it then. So Phil could fill us in, maybe that seems useful to me. So I'm Phil Newberg. For those of you who don't know me, I'm sure. Is this? Uh, yeah, that's, that's for the online, online. online. Yeah. So that's good for the online. So okay. People behind you. Okay, so I'm Phil Newber. Uh, can you all hear me and now? <laughs> yeah, I'm an architect and I live at Four Church across the street. Uh, as I said, I'm here this evening to update you all on the work of the Town Hall Building Committee, a uh, group that's been comprised of municipal staff as well as citizens um, that you all appointed last spring. Um, and as I said, Alita. Uh, is the leader of the group, but she has a graduation today, so she's not here. Um, our work follows upon the work of the Ad Hoc Town Hall Rejuvenation Committee, which looked at envisioning the future use of Town Hall. And our committee's mission, however, was narrowed, stepped back, and looked at intensive uh, kind of analysis of the health of the building, if you will, uh, its fabric, its condition, overall structural integrity. Um, to that end, we engaged architectural historians and architects from Mills and Schnoring. Um, they're a seasoned firm that specializes in historic preservation and theater renovations to assemble not only all the records, conduct the visual condition survey of the building envelope with an examination of the existing mechanical and analyze all those findings and then develop a prioritized list of needed capital improvements to ensure continued use of town hall which uh, is a contributing resource to the Woodstock Village National Register Historic District. So um, after the presentation, I, uh, as I said, we were hoping um, we can certainly come back in a month and we wanted to s try to have some open houses in the summer, um, something we had actually discussed with Jill at one of our meetings so that residents can become familiar with the um, report as we're 
uh, wanting to make all of you aware. And then come back maybe in the fall with some ideas about funding options um, for capital improvements. So um, given the 10 minute time frame, I'm gonna ask um, Meredith Bizdak and Jen Arnold from uh, Mills and Schnoring to run through about 10 slides that they have or so. Um, so go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'll just start off quickly. In the interest of time, I'm going to let Jen jump right into the slides. Um, I can either share my screen or I thought somebody there had the PDF they were going to use. I have the PDF. I can share that as well. Okay, great. Great. Um, I'll just say quickly, I was the project manager for this. I'm an architectural historian and a partner with Mills and Schoring Architects. My partner, uh, Michael Schnoring, is also here in case anyone has any questions. He's on the call. Uh, and Jen, our project architect, is going to walk you um, relatively quickly through what we did this fall and have been working on with the committee. So thank you very much for attending tonight. Jen? Yep. So we wanted to say after our assessment in the late fall, where we did have a structural engineer on our team, um, we wanted to, as Phil said, prioritize the um, big issues for the building um, and what we wanna to do to protect the building itself and then also protect the um, safety and health of the occupants of the building. Because that's important for long-term preservation is looking out for you know, the employees who work there as well as the um, visitors and patrons of the building. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Sorry, I don't have control. So this is at the rear stage house uh, and you know it's been known for some time that the back of the building has settled some. Um, we see the juncture here between the stage house at the right and the original building. And over years, there's been concrete buttresses put up. There's a red angle that's sort of hiding the large gap um, between the two. So our recommendation is to really stabilize that rear stage house, um, keep it from moving any further, keep the foundation stable, um, and then do the tying of the walls to um, the original portion of the building, again, which is on the left. Uh, also stabilizing the roof framing um, with reinforcement and the fly loft framing. So uh, that's the main stabilization work. Let's go to the next slide. At the front of the building, we wanna keep your entrance safe. Um, you can see the granite steps have displaced. Um, some of them have heaved due to freeze thaw movement. Um, you also have the brick, which is the porch area showing some displacement, some have settled a little, others have you know, heaved or risen. So we recommend pulling out, putting a new concrete substrate, waterproofing, um, also against the foundation of the building. There's some signs um, at the front wall of efflorescence, which is moisture infiltration. Um, so making that safe, putting the brick down um, level and even for a safe passage. Uh, continuing with building envelope issues, yeah, go ahead. Uh, also at the front of the building, we would look at the woodwork. And this looks at the woodwork, um, per particularly the cornice, which is wrapping around the building at the top there. You see this is on, both of these are on the east side, but there are signs of some wood rot or splitting, open joints. Um, we really need to have a better understanding of the drainage at the roof system. Our understanding is that runoff, snow melt, even icicles just sort of fall down that full three stories from the roof level. So we would really, uh, look to address drainage from the roof. Um, the right photo is actually the exterior side of the elevator. Uh, we also recommend a full upgrade of your elevator. It was put in in 1986 during that work, um, but it's had some water ponding issues. Um, it's also, you know, most of the parts are unavailable. It's hard to do repairs. Um, so we would recommend a full upgrade also adding a stop at the mezzanine because it currently does not provide accessibility at the mezzanine level. Um, go ahead, you can move to the next slide. Uh, this is continuing with this idea of moisture infiltration. Uh, you see plaster, which has fallen. This is in the stair hall, also on the floor above this. Um, there's been ceiling plaster that's uh, come down. A lot of this can be due to um, moisture. There may be an internal rainwater conductor in that chase that may not be properly capped. Um, there could be water getting in um, from a cracked pipe or something. And, and that's this is a typical uh, sign of water infiltration, staining, obviously plaster deterioration. Um, 
Let's go to the next one. Another envelope issue has to do with windows. The windows are old and we love them, uh, but we recommend restoring them, which typically re involves removing a sash, um, pulling out all that old glazing putty, reglazing them, replacing cracked panes, refitting them where the um, styles or rails have sort of moved or deteriorated and reinstalling. Uh, we would also recommend interior storms where they don't exist now, um, which will improve your thermal um, protection of the building. And looking at interior spaces, because we did look at the whole building, you have toilet rooms uh, that are certainly outdated uh, that don't provide accessible amount of space or fixtures. Uh, this is the second floor office toilets. You're also based on the conference room um, size and your occupancy on the whole second floor. You're not code compliant with the number of toilet rooms. Um, you really should have one more toilet room on the second floor for each um, sex. Um, toilet rooms in the basement are also outdated. There have been problems with plumbing. Plumbing is typically old around the building. Um, and accessibility at the green room restrooms is also not not there. Um, so we would recommend putting in accessible uh, fixtures there. Go ahead, move on to the next slide. The auditorium is also not an accessible space. Um, and accessible seats in a theater usually need, or do need, I should say, a level floor surface and all, must have a good line of sight for a variety of seating areas. Um, they also must have an adjacent fixed companion seat and should be an adjacent to an egress path certainly not be in the middle of an egress path. So uh, based on code for your occupancy, the theater should have six wheelchair locations and four accessible aisle seats. Um, so we would recommend putting in platforms to provide this accessible seating and then re-raking the floor um, with new seating. And the last slide, just to go quickly again, is the mechanical systems, which also are outdated. This is the air handling unit and associated ductwork at the rear of the building, um, it's not really working. It's supposed to be providing the stage area. There are six air handling units in the building, which are actually not providing um, forced ventilation into the building. So by code, you don't have fresh air coming into the building. Um, and also it's a, it's a convoluted system. So uh, we've gotten a price for a new system, which would um, you know, be more efficient and would consolidate. Um, you could also go with a heat pump system, which is electrical power supply, so thereby more being more um, energy friendly uh, and sustainable. Uh, so as part of the foundation work anyway, this system would have to sort of be rethought. So really mechanical becomes a big part of work that has to get done in the building. And the last few slides are the price estimate that we had. Go ahead. Uh, again, as Phil said, they were prioritized in terms of work that should be done. Yep. So the red we put as priority one for the structural work, um, also the front porch portico work and the associated mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work, as I mentioned. Uh, that total figure was 3.2 million. We then put, sorry to go back in the blue, is priority 2A which largely deals with modernization of the elevator, making additional roof drainage improvements, um, envelope improvements to um, so, you know, seal up your building, auditorium and theater accessibility upgrades, um, and some associated mechanical, plumbing, electrical uh, restrooms also falls into that. So that was the 2A category, what is that number looking at? Uh, 4.8 million. The next slide is what we called 2B, which looked at providing a new addition to add accessibility to your stage area and also provide a new elevator, which would allow you to um, bring larger sets and equipment and things to the elevator at the rear of the building. So this is a new addition uh, with its associated work, 3.5 million. And priority three primarily looked at upgrading finishes within the building. So it was a lot of the second floor offices. Yep. 2.3 million. Um, also, those there would be some office layout and restroom layout areas to deal with adding another fixture and accessible restrooms at the second floor. And so the last two slides are just the floor plans by that sort of color coded scheme with the um, red. Let me zoom out a little bit. 
Um, the, the pink reddish area shows the rear, which is that foundation, as well as the portico front area as priority one. Uh, the blue is accessibility and also the band going around the building for exterior improvements, also the elevator. Uh, the green is our priority 2B. It's a new addition. That's just a conceptual box placed there. And um, the yellow, and then also on the next slide is the second floor with the yellow color that we placed as priority three. So we're happy to take questions. Uh, we just wanted to give you an overview, as we said, of our findings and um, uh, look forward to future meetings. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, would you tell them how, when they're come to a select board meeting, when their information is here? Yeah, so I think once you have, we come with the more well, um, well, when they come and the uh, Wednesday before the meeting. Oh, then, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, so just um, when we have you uh, scheduled for the next meeting, uh, if we have all the documents the Wednesday before, um, typically the agenda goes out that Thursday. Friday was the booklet out. You have to select one of the public about five days and go through everything that we we'll, we'll asked for next time. So yeah, it's a shame because we had it. I'm not sure why. It wasn't brought up to you. So, anyway, at least that gives us a general. Roger has a, a question. So, um, what's the total number? In the, around 10, I think, if you add them all. Is that right? Um, I'm pretty sure. 14 million. 13.9, yeah. Yeah. Jill? Does your presentation address the stability of the building? Yes. That's where the that. first priority is. The, the unpinned? Yes. So it's substantiated a fair bit of the findings. This is the second opinion, if you will, from the work that the committee Jill was on did earlier and substantiates that that really needs to take place first. The primary difference, as I said, is that I think that looked at use of the building long term. We really uh, made a assumption as a committee that the use would be look at not only deferred maintenance but code update and structural stability and envelope in the future. So it builds upon the work of the former committee and substantiates that particular finding that we do need to address the back. So we just don't know when the next catastrophic flood will happen. I got a question on and then online there. Um, Tom, go ahead. Thank you. Is there an agreed objective as to what we're trying to accomplish? <laughs> I think that's the project, the, the, the working project of the of the committee is to establish establish the overall goals in, in well, this. So I get a, a series of numbers and I get a series of improvements but i don't realize and understand what we're trying to achieve i don't know whether we're trying to preserve an active stage you know i don't know what we're trying to accomplish and my understanding is that this committee's role was to determine what money needs to be spent to maintain the building for its current use. I would suggest as you read the report that okay. you question the objective of the current committee, because now you've got several different reports. You've got one that says it's going to cost over 10 million to keep this building serving its current function to make it safe and code compliant. You've got a report from the prior committee that says, we think it costs too much money to serve at the current commitments of the building. We think it's a ridiculous amount of money to make what we really want in the way of a theater and things. So perhaps I've got a call to revisit what do we want this building to serve as? which is where the last committee fell apart, and maybe we come full circle and we're back to that. So just a thought. I should be yeah, one comment from John and then I'll... 
I would just echo that. I think that whether it's at this meeting or, or a month from now, when you have a chance to reflect on it and so forth, I do think that what both Tom and Jill are saying is the key thought process that the select board has to go through. Do we want to spend what now two committees have said is is north of $10 million to maintain the current building as is? Or are there other options that at least before we make a decision should be explored? Yeah. You know, and then there was a comment from Roger. And yeah, I just want to echo the citizen comments that have been made. That is a very, and we need to look with a, with a pinpoint eye at exactly what functions we're going to be serving with this amount of money. Um, and I think the last committee did a really good job of presenting a whole series of options that if we use the building for this, if we do that, if we take the stage house off, Various things and price points, obviously estimated price points that went along with that. We're talking 14 million, which is going to go up to 20 million by the time we get working on this project. That is a lot of money without standing back and making hard decisions about about return of about the value added of the spending. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, next on the agenda is planning administrator appointment. Yep. So, uh, Stephen Bauer was nominated again by the planning commission to serve as, um, the planning administrator appointment. So it's just select board either vote in favor or against. And is this for three years now or is this? Yes. This is his uh, new term. So this would be the planning. Planning and zoning administrator. Planning, yeah, the planning. title planning and zoning right now. Yeah, but he's also the administrator, the administrator as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right so with yeah. Administrator also, yeah. Still a past term because he's no, been here three years. There was some confusion about when Neil's three year term would have been up. I guess. I thought we'd reappointed him for three years in March. We were organized. So we, but, did, we did, but the planning commission had not recommended him yet. Oh, right. So this is just getting the timeline in, in, in the correct order. So it's like what did vote in favor on the reorg meeting after town meeting. So this is for that same three year period then? Yeah. Okay. So I was I was off on that, but I would entertain a motion. I'd just like it to be planning and zoning. Yes. Planning. Yep. We, that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. We have I, I would uh, entertain a motion to reappoint. Stephen as the planning and zoning administrator. Second. Motion by Mary, second by Susan. Uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. That motion carries. We have on page 25 of our packets a easement for Ottaquichi River Trail. Tom, <laughs> can you tell me where physically? This easement is in relation to the trail. I tried to provide that to Eric earlier. Could you help me, Eric? I, I sent it to you, right, Joe? Yeah, I was still was confused. Yeah, let me it find is it. in front uh, between the wastewater treatment facility and the river. Uh, it is, uh, there is a berm that is there. There's riprap, there's a berm, there is a uh, a chain link fence. It is between the riprap and the chain link fence. And it is, uh, if you have walked the Ottaquichi River Trail, you would go through, uh, thank you. It is the black line. The black line is the trail. That would be where we would be putting handicap accessibility. So where would? And, so yeah, where's the five feet you're talking about for this one? That is the black line. Seems right. The black line is more than five feet, right? Uh, five feet wide. Is it five feet five wide? Five feet wide. You know. Oh, five, five, oh, five feet okay. wide. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I missed that. Yeah. And uh, what I pointed out to Eric, this was uh, out of Parcel Viewer, and uh, as you know, to the west of that line on the 
uh, Woodstock Resort Corporation property on the riprap we have already completed hard pack to the left or to the west. So this is for the trail, it's to widen the trail. No, it's not to widen, it's to provide universal accessibility. That is the project is that ORT has been funded by the select board and approved by, or, or funded by EDC and approved by you. And we need permits by each individual property owner. And the town of Woodstock is the property owner for the wastewater treatment facility. And we need a permit to be able to put hard pack to cover that stretch. Uh, it would be five feet wide. And frankly, we actually don't need hard pack there because uh, that material that you have in that berm is already quite uh, firm, um, so to say. And the only thing that we would need to be uh, you know, providing is coverage over some tree roots. There are some trees on the border uh, with Sunset Farms where <laughs> the tree roots protrude into the trail and they would be difficult for those in wheelchairs to be able to um, maneuver. Are those the roots, are they on the Sunset Farm property or the sewer plant property? You know or what? Both? I don't know. I mean, okay. they're, they're literally, you know, at that, uh, you know, kind of uh, juncture, um, okay. you know, but, uh, you know, uh, Joe, I mean, you know, this, your property on um, for the wastewater treatment facility is very secure. There is, you know, some grass that grows through the material that you have there, but it is heavily compacted. And, and so I, I think in some ways, the hard pack is, uh, you know, it's what we requested, but, you know, frankly, you know, wheelchairs could make their way across your property and we would do it only selectively as required okay and the trails so the trails already five feet is for the surface that's yes sir you know improved. what we're trying to achieve eventually in the uh in the grant that we got from the edc is to create um, about three tenths of a mile uh, from the trailhead to uh, the property just to the west, the 400 feet to the west. And that would uh, uh, provide three tenths of a mile out and three tenths of a mile back so that folks could have the ability to appreciate the river and appreciate appreciate nature. Okay, and, this is much clearer for me now. I was trying to picture where five foot access ooh, point was going. Oh, I so, got it. So, I, so, I, my, so that was my mistake, but I think no, it should say red. Um, yeah, my my concern. I'm no longer an attorney, but I don't think this document does what you want it to do. It the town of Woodstock is a grantor, so it actually needs to be set up with the town of Woodstock being the main signatory and probably with the notary. Um, no, so we're, I, re we're requesting a, a, a permit with the town of Woodstock as the signator. This is purports to be an easement. Uh, it's not an easement. We're not requesting an easement. I'm sorry for that. We had requested a permit from the town of Woodstock. And so. we're requesting yeah. and we have received a, a, um, a permit from Sunset Farms as we have from the Woodstock Resort Corp. So, so I'm very confused now. Well, yeah, so there was some discussion internally in my office because it is town property that an easement might be the right way to go. 
because we want to make sure that town. Well, we already have an easement. The town has an easement as it does over Sunset Farms, as it does over the Woodstock Resort Corp, because they have a 30 foot from center easement over the sewers. And so we already have an easement. Uh, the town does. The town does, but you're asking to use our easement. So I don't believe this document does what you're asking. That's well, all I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm happy to go with your guidance. I'm just requesting the what I thought. I went to Eric and I asked. Um, we need the permission. I was told that we need permission from the property owners. And that was the request. Now that I understand the request, that I'm following to make sense. Do we want to try to? Do you want to? Do you want to use the town attorney to review the document, or? Yeah, I think we should make sure we have someone review. Yeah. Yeah. Just so, just so also, we move forward the right. Just so we move forward with the right paperwork. Yeah, I don't think this does what they want, and I also think it would be good to have um, some language in here about who maintains, repairs, and replaces any of that, yeah. the work they're doing. Okay. Tom, I have a, a question. Yeah, where, please. Where are they going to um, access uh, the trail from in wheelchairs? Uh, from the trailhead? <laughs> Which is just, just uh, on the uh, Woodstock Resort Corp property. Yeah, and just, that is at your request, Ray, we met with David Green, and he reviewed our construction plans to make sure that we were in compliance with wheelchair accessibility. And he said that our construction was in excess of the requirements and very much was recommending or approving what we were doing. Um, so the access would be, you know, intended access would be at the trailhead, but I'm sure somebody with a wheelchair could also access the trail from Sunset Farms parking. Right. So I think we, the plan right now is have our town attorney review this. Yeah, I think we agree in principle. We just want to make sure the document's correct. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I'll go with your guidance. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, EDC review. I just, could I just say a, a few things about that last proposal, please? Uh, I think we've moved on. Joe, are, are you ready for the EDC discussion? Yes. Yep. So you've received a short uh, memo, um, just a one page memo and then some backup material. And I think Trina, I know Jill is on. I don't see Jill actually, but. Jill, she, she's in person. Oh, in person, okay, great. Um, the, um, normally we only come to the, ED, to the select board with funding decisions. Um, and so this is a break with that process because there's no funding that's being requested. The, the funding for the programs here have already been approved by um, by the select board in prior meetings. As the housing programs have been implemented, the housing team is optimizing, you know, getting feedback from the community, getting applications from people that, you know, qualify or don't qualify. And um, and they have concluded that making some minor changes or modest changes, I should say, to the program would help to achieve the objectives of the program even better. I do want to say that that to date, the program has um, has uh, created incentives for ten additional units for employee housing, all of which meet the pretty rigorous requirements of the various housing programs. So the, it seems to be working. I think, is, is it correct, Jill, that one of those 10 is contingent upon these, these changes? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
So it's nine and then 10 with, with these changes. But going forward, we think that these changes will help to expand further the number of units. Two of the changes I think are, these are in, in order of uh, importance, I guess, in terms of your consideration. The first one I think is pretty straightforward, very straightforward. The current program as, as we had set the policy originally was that the shortest lease that we would create an incentive for was 12 months. We got feedback that seasonal employees need us, that, that some employers who have seasonal employees really could benefit from a six month lease period. We don't see any downside to that. Um, and so that's the first change is to, is to allow for six month leases. Um, the second change is, is tweaking how we calculate the incentive. The programs that were in, in initially implemented was based on the number of bedrooms that you made available, newly new rental space that was made available, a higher incentive for more bedrooms. The current recommendation is to base the incentive primarily, almost exclusively, not quite, <laughs> on the number of Woodstock employees rather than the number of bedrooms. So, for example, if if um, Joe, you were to to build a you know a three bedroom ADU, or, or sorry, this is for rental apartments. If you were to bring on online a a uh, a three bedroom rental, but only have one Woodstock employee in those three bedrooms, the rest being family members or whatever you would get a smaller incentive than if two of those, if there were two employees and a smaller incentive, if, you know, a bigger incentive if there were three. So we're, we're trying to tie the incentives directly to the purpose of the program, which is to provide housing to local employees. Both of those, I think, are, I hope you'll feel are, are obvious improvements and, and, and not, you know, and, and that you would approve those without much questioning. The third one, which we strongly support, is an issue. It relates to an issue that has been debated before by the select board, which is particularly why we wanted to bring this back before you. We are proposing to allow the rental incentives for rental units that are created outside of Woodstock in the neighboring towns. So if Joe, if you own, sorry, I'm just going to make you the landowner in this meeting, Joe. I like being if, the land baron, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, right. <laughs> If you owned uh, 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 an apartment that you were making available in Barnard, uh, if you were renting it to someone from Woodstock, you would be eligible to an employee who worked in Woodstock, you would be eligible for the incentive. And this is based on market feedback. We believe particularly because the rental prices in some of the neighboring towns are lower than they are in Woodstock. We believe that this will open up further opportunity for creating workforce housing. But I do know in the child care discussion, for example, there was some question um, as to the legality, which we confirmed it was allowed, but also the policy of whether or not to be giving Woodstock taxpayer money to entities that were not in Woodstock. And, and we use the same logic that we did in the child care. If you remember that the vast majority of the places that would have been created in the Bridgewater child care organization were to families in Woodstock. And in this case, the incentive would only go to someone, 100% of the workforce that would be housed would be Woodstock uh, employees, because we won't give an incentive unless you're providing, unless you're providing space for a Woodstock employee. So we're recommending these three policy changes. Again, no funding, but we, we just, we thought that you should approve this uh, because particularly the third one is, you know, seemed to be a sensitive issue in the past. I, I do have one question um, regarding the the amounts. If there's a current landlord tenant with current Woodstock employees, are they eligible for this? I'm going to let Jill and Trina. I don't know if Trina's there, but Jill, Jill, could you manage the Q and A? Yes, but I'll have to look it up. I couldn't hear what Jill said. Yes, but I'll. He's looking it up. You know, you want to come up so that yeah, they, please. Can, they can hear you better, please? Thank you. I, I believe you. these are for new. These are for new. Because I, I had one current landlord with multiple Woodstock business employees that with 
uh, is struggling not to raise rent. Yes. And I, I would sooner maintain Woodstock properties, or maintain this yes. for in town than to go out of town. So I think, uh, so in answer to your first question, um, reading through the rules, I don't see that that person would be excluded. Mm -hmm. And I think the point is we want to do both. Okay. Because we've had examples recently of taking um, properties off the market as long-term rentals and turn them into short-term rentals. And so we originally, we had that clause that it had to be a new rental and we've taken it away because of this situation and the feedback that you've got and we've had. So. Well, Jill, one, one thing that occurred to me, because it occurred, Joe's concern is really a question, Joe, about prioritization. One thing that I don't think would hurt our program at all is that if we are running at the end of our funding and there are applications from Woodstock-based buildings or non-Woodstock-based buildings, it seems to me that we could easily give priority to the Woodstock-based buildings because if we have to, if we can only do a certain number, we should do the Woodstock ones first. That wouldn't hurt the program and would achieve Joe's concern. We we didn't discuss that at the EDC, but but if but if but only if there's a, a choice between one or the other. But we're not in a choice position. We, no, we not currently. Money to support everything. Is there an, an open period for applications to be, or is it rolling? It's first come first served. Okay, I have a, um, a question on number two. You said Woodstock employees only, but on the uh, read someplace, but in your I listened to the recording <laughs> meeting, and you said one Woodstock employee and a spouse or significant other that wasn't working Woodstock. Correct, so but the is that but correct? the incentive is only for the employee. In other words, if you look at the second page that I sent you, that with the chart in it. It, the Woodstock employee is is the qualified tenant, and so you get an incentive for each qualified tenant. It doesn't matter how many people you put in. If you if you put a family of ten with one Woodstock qualified and tenant, you only get the first. You only get one in two thousand five hundred dollars for a one year lease. Doesn't matter the other nine people. You don't get anything for it. Well, What's actually, the column then for per non qualified? So I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You get a little bit more for the others. I, that's where we. That's why I said it's it's primarily the number of Woodstock employees. So so the situation we had was that three bedroom rental properties were being rented to one person, one individual, and that didn't seem to be achieving our objectives. So we wanted to reverse the incentives so that their in, the incentive is related to the number of people who are occupying the home within the fire code restrictions. So that's the that's the, how the table is organized. But, well, so, sorry, Joe, I, I, the, the, I, I just wanna sharpen that point. It's the, the incentives are primarily related to the number of Woodstock employees and in a minor way related to the number of additional people. So for mm -hmm. example, if you look at the first row of that in a one, a one year lease, if there was, if you put one person into the unit, no matter how big the unit is, you'd get two thousand five hundred dollars. If you put two people in, you would get two thousand seven hundred dollars. So you do get a little bit more, but the what, what we're because more people in Woodstock is economic development. It's not the primary purpose of this, but it is economic development. More people are going to restaurants, they're buying food, they're attending the school, whatever those extra does, people Does do. this hold true for out of town too? So if someone in Barnard is a, a husband, wife, one person works in Woodstock, one person doesn't, they'd get the 2500 and then the $200 for the <laughs> non-employee person living outside of Woodstock? Right. We did not anticipate that at the meeting. Subsequent okay. to the meeting, we did anticipate it. It, it, it. I'll just give you my personal opinion. I don't think we should be paying an incentive for Barnard to increase their population. So I would, I would, but, but the EDC would have to revise. We did, we did not, we okay. did not realize that until, so we would have to take up that issue <laughs> I think we would agree to, I don't know, Jill, how you would feel. But so, I so we could manage it so that um, if the house was 
if the house was outside of the stock, they would be ineligible for that final column of the two hundred dollars. Right. So it wouldn't be an issue. Right. John, question. Yep. So with the child care centers being out of town, there was some comfort because they're under state licensing. So we knew that there would be some control of the space and what it looked like and the safety. With this, I mean, I think if the, if the project's in Woodstock, David Green goes and- The state license for rental property. For rental. What kind of license? The state. Is he a landlord? No, the fire inspection. For fire. Okay. Is a state level. David. So, so David Green goes. Like oh, yeah, for place. Airbnbs and stuff, he'll go. Yeah, but for statewide, for if <laughs> Jill's doing Airbnb, Dave Green will go and check. If she's doing her long term rental, right. it's the state that comes in. We are trying to get that on local level, but it's still at the state level. Okay. So it'll be the same for a house in Barnard as a house in. Mm -hmm. Well, if the property values are less, why don't we offering less money for the leases? <laughs> Well, so the interesting thing about these programs is the, the level of administration that you put into these programs starts to defeat what you're giving out. You wouldn't believe how many hours it takes Trina to administrate these uh, programs. Each hour that she works costs us, and we didn't think that that, that level of difference was worth the extra hassle that it takes in administration. If we want Woodstock workers to have a home. Well, I, I I can't see improving homes outside of Woodstock and not getting the tax. We're not we're not improving homes. We're we're helping people if somebody giving has, people an incentive to rent it. To rent it, but there's also improvement to be made if you're gonna rent something that you've never rented before. You can't if you have a couple of spare bedrooms and you're throwing a bathroom, that I, I just I, I I wasn't crazy about the a daycare, but I, I agree with it because but I can't I, I can't see spending money in other towns with stock money. It just I, I just can't. Yeah. So so let me give you a, an example, a real example. So somebody has a home that's in Bridgewater. And she has the she she is faced with the choice of renting it on Airbnb or renting it to a Woodstock teacher. If we give her an incentive, she will go away from Airbnb and rent it to the Woodstock teacher. What would we prefer her to do? And at what cost? And we're suggesting that we give her 2,500 a year to give a teacher a home. Why don't you give the teacher a voucher and let them- Because there's the nowhere for her to go right now. The availability is not there because of the short term rental. Mm -hmm. I, what's the process to ensure in three months in, four months in, the person still working in a Woodstock business? So Trina has a job as a compliance officer yeah. and checks leases each six months to make sure that everything is as uh, was committed on day one. One of the funds dispersed. So if someone qualifies for one tenant with a one year lease, for twenty five hundred dollars, the person loses their job through no fault of their own, just downsizing. I'm Do they keep all twenty five hundred dollars? No, we they sign an agreement so that we we can claw back money. But this all goes against the deed to their house. The if everything's filed with the town clerk's office, it, it's very strict, so Perfect. that you're not paying people. We actually get a lien, Jill. I, my understanding is we actually get a lien on the property. Yes. So, so they'll, pay, so check. they'll, yeah. So they they'll have to pay us back, Joe, for for the proportion that they're not conforming. I mean, it's we. I mean, there's risk to life, so it's not yeah. you know one twenty five hundred dollars over. You know, it's just I want to make sure there's controls. So what happens if there's a teacher that lives in Rutland? Then what do we do? We don't support the teacher in Rutland wouldn't pass our uh, criteria to be a qualified tenant, so we wouldn't be paying anything toward that. I teacher. think you mean the Woodstock teacher lives in Rutland. Yes. Yeah. So Woodstock teacher decides to move to Rutland because there's more social life than there is in Rutland. Right. So we only give this. Well, <laughs> but, well 
<laughs> so we've limited the towns that we work it that we will give this grant to to the ones that touch us. Barnard, Bridgewater, Pomfret, Reading, or Holland is our limit. Is is there is there an administrative benefit to that for Trina, you know, in terms of compliance and checking? Yeah. I mean if a because if, if a person is, knows what their commute tolerance is and what their budget is, what's the difference in someone living in Lebanon or White River? I guess let's keep it within the state lines, but living in White River <laughs> um, as opposed to living in Heartland. Does uh, Trina have to do an inspection, Jill? She does. So she inspects the property before it's rented and um, she builds a relationship with the individual. So if we opened it, we'd be increasing her administration hours just off the cuff. But there's no, I mean, you could question, well, maybe we should extend them. If you're, if, if you're talking about extending the program, maybe that's another improvement we can make. These are pilots and we, we're experimenting to find the right the right solution that will give homes to teachers, firefighters, police. Yeah. They need homes. I think my yeah, I'll get to you just. I think my opinion is Woodstock. Obviously, I'm not convinced that we should be expanding to towns outside of Woodstock. But if we do, I don't see a point a per, or a, a benefit to specifically limiting it to these. I, I, I can see where it comes from. I just can't really think it might make sense to go a little bit broader. But. Anecdotally, I see daily the need for this kind of this, this kind of program and this kind of housing. Um, and there's really there's not even an agent anymore in anywhere around that helps people find rentals and that works in that space. And there's so few rentals and people who have rental properties are loving the money they're getting from short-term rentals logistically for trina and for the implementation of the program it makes a lot of sense to at least start the pilot locally so you can keep your arms around it seems very practical to me and roger um i've got a suggestion to make um, first of all i think typically of the edc this is a very well thought out and documented program my suggestion is to adopt this program as it stands and then see if there are different tweaks. Like in a year, you say, yeah, let's expand to Rutland or, or whatever else. But, but as Jill said, this is a pilot. It's, it's, a, it's a very worthwhile effort. And I think we can test results rather than, than look, than, than kind of try and anticipate everything. So I would suggest you go ahead and prove it contingent on revisiting in a year or whenever, whenever. And I, I also, just as a Woodstock taxpayer, if Woodstock EDC money is going to help a Woodstock employer find a place to live, which is extraordinarily difficult, I don't know where it is. Uh, employee, sorry, not employer. So do you have the example you were talking about, is that an example or is that in that? A situation is trying to resolve. It's a situation. We have an applicant in that situation right now, and we can't approve. We've been waiting on whether we can do this to see how much money we would in whether we can incentive. A, a tenant applicant. If, if, uh, a homeowner applicant. But no, no Woodstock resident ready to go in. No Woodstock Business, employee. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a, the applicant is the homeowner, but that homeowner has a tenant that meets our criteria. Okay, it's a okay that's what I'm trying to find out. Uh, Antonia has a question, I believe. Yes, um, it seems like all of these contortions we're all going through might be met by simply subsidizing the rent of a person who works and lives in Woodstock and takes a newly uh, developed apartment. Okay, that was Can the I... idea of the voucher. May I respond to that? Go ahead, John. So this program is about finding employees' homes, but it's got an important precursor 
which is to make the homes available. There aren't enough rental properties available. So we could subsidize employees, but if there's nowhere to go, it's, there's no point. So we have to find more units. And uh, we believe that in, given an incentive, the property owner will create more units. I, I am not in favor of doing it, but I would compromise with the home in Bridgewater and doing a test for a year and see how that works out. I would do that, but I am not in favor of just blanket saying uh, and it, run to the five other towns. So, I mean, $6,000 to, can I ask, will EDC have to come back yeah. for approval of spending the next yeah. chunk of money at 424? Yes, we, every year the EDC, can, every, well, every year so right, we go to the EDC. Not until they run out of funds. Okay. So that could also be a check rate too that, you know, if when the next time the money comes up, you could. Right, but so. they don't have to come back until they run out of the funds that have already been approved. And that may take a year or two. Uh, so no. we come back every year. Well, Jill, the, the piece of this, it might be, we don't know how fast the funds, the funds carry over. So, I mean, Ray is technically right. It could take longer. I think, I mean, the funds, this program is starting to get some real momentum. So, I mean, I don't think, I just given the way it works, we could, we will have to come, it, the funds won't last for a decade. I don't. Oh, no. That'd be great. Can I ask a quick question before we, we wrap up? So, John, Jill, what, what would be success to you for a year from now? If you came back, you know, Ray asked and potentially for a year, if you came back this time next year, what would success mean to you in the last, the next 12 months? So success is creating more units, getting more Woodstock people into homes, maybe creating, creating a situation where we can actually get our schools fully staffed, because <laughs> we're not right now, creating a situation where our, our firefighters live close to where they work, which is what, which is a requirement and they can't, uh, creating a situation where we can have childcare providers not traveling one hour in stormy weather. Do you, so creating the, the homes for people who need it. Do you have a number? I think now you have nine right now signed up, actually 10. Is there a goal you try and get to like 20, 25 in the next year or just? We don't have a numerical goal. Um, <laughs> But we could calculate one based on the numbers. Yeah, we 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 have we could we actually were in the process of doing that. It's based on how much funding has already been approved at these average rates of incentives. How many more units would that be? I mean, just Jill or I'm going to guess across all of the programs, it's another it's another ten to twelve units on top of the ten. I mean, it's not fifty and it's not three. Is that right, Jill, or am I right? And what's, so we, we haven't got the numbers and we could come to them. One of the calculations we did when we applied for our grant is the cost per unit. And with, so the cost per unit, we could, I think we could go to the cost per unit per year. Yeah. So this program is saying for a one year lease for one employee, 2,500. Right. Um, and then we could calculate the averages over time. Is it competitive? Per, so that's, that's not the right wording. Um, if someone comes that wants to do this, that meets the qualifications, but is a is an existing landlord, is that going to be delayed to review something that comes in to create new housing? So we, we or is so it literally just you meet the requirements first come first serve? We've done it first come first served, and we haven't been in a situation where we've uh, run out of money or been overwhelmed by applicants. So that's why we're trying to make things more attractive. Now, also, I don't, I can't picture where Barnard and Woodstock share a border. So if we were going to only include towns that share a border, we should not include Barnard. Don't you cross the line when you go from well, Woodstock? Go no, Comfort. It goes through Comfort first. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah. Okay, my misunderstanding. You could take this short period. I thought. I, mean, I don't really. Like... I don't really mind, but I also don't mind doing White River. But I think if we're going to be specific, we should be specific. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't think there's any harm if you take Barnard off. I don't. Think, we haven't had applicants from Barnard. I'm really not convinced about going 
to outside property. I, I would go but try it for you. I would make a motion that we, I mean, I don't know that you need our consent or what you're looking for. We, we, we don't, we, you don't need we, don't, we just felt that, you know, this is a small town. We, we just felt it was important given the, this exact discussion indicates why we came to you. I would, I would put whatever you, I would put something in the form of a motion to try to figure out what you think. So I would approve the six month lease and then number two, your your different way of doing the incentives and approve three for one year and ask you to come back and tell us how it went. Okay. I'll second it. Thank you. So the motion is to expand the one and two year lease to include six month lease. Was this, did the one and two year already exist? Yes, that's what we tried yeah. last year. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so to expand that to six months, um to what was the second one the 200 dollar incentive the 200 dollar changing the incentive no 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 it's the second the spec the incentives to the num to relate to the number of qualified bedrooms. tenants right. rather than the bed number of bedrooms okay right. so to change the mm -hmm. to the number of qualified tenants can so I can ask is this going to impact anyone negatively anyone now the nine people will they lose money no because no. Because they agreed under the old terms. Okay, just make sure. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure that yeah. was going to cost for that one. And to pilot for one year, including Bridgewater, Pomfret, Reading. No, pilot Bridgewater, Reza. Oh, My the. Motion is to do all. That's what I understood. Okay. Susan's yeah. motion to be. I don't want to. I don't want them to have to come back to us next week and say, "Oh, now we have one in Hartwood." Right. So, the motion so is to do the whole thing for a year. To, to, to pilot for one year, including landlords for, in addition to Woodstock, Bridgewater, Pomfret, Reading, and Heartland. Right, exclude one. Sorry, Barnard. <laughs> and then we'll probably get a house from Barnard. <laughs> then I would like to add, if that's what, that's your motion, I would like to add that instead of checking every six months, we check every three months to make sure that person still a Woodstock employee. Just for the ones outside of Woodstock or for all of them? No, just for the ones outside of Woodstock. As part of the pilot. As part of the pilot. So we actually see what happens. Yeah, just, so yeah. for increased increased uh, oversight. Oversight, thank you. To be yes. technically Should correct. Uh, for our, for our um, rules of procedure, we're already yeah. in the motion, so we're at the board discussion only. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so the motion has been made has it been, and has been seconded after being adjusted to include every three month uh, compliance. compliance checks. Um, is there any more discussion, Carrie? No. Carrie? Next okay. is hard barking. <laughs> um, Cyrus said something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was relevant. So if the motion has been made and seconded, I'd call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, I just want to keep it in what's like with the motion carries three to two. Okay. So we'll do an experiment and we'll come back and report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Joe, you. can I just make one comment? I hope you guys don't mind. I know that if we're like oversharing with you or coming back to you too frequently, uh, this is an exception to the process. I thought it was important. And I think this discussion indicates that it was a useful thing for you guys to. to... And yeah, I, I think we appreciate the discussion. So yeah. thank okay. you. Yeah, and John, John, as you know, I recommended you coming here tonight. I think this was important. So yeah, it was on me as well. So thank you. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you got no other business for sewer number for sewer billing going to page 30. Um, so it sounds like someone dropped off payment on time, but maybe it's was in a different name than the account. And so it got 
sort of no, display. Sir. Thank you. Um, my only comment was going to say that Hartford actually borders Woodstock too, but that's a different comment. And so, um, um, no, this is really for principal. Yes, we paid the sewer bill on time. Our tenant came to uh, the town hall and wrote a check and I attached the receipt for the check um, and uh, that our tenant indicated that it was 415 Maple Street. And, um, and then there appeared to be some transposition of the, as you can see, the receipt indicates 24 period, 25 period, 14. The actual property number is 24 period, 52 period, 14. Um, somehow uh, it was not indicated to, uh, even though the tenant indicated it was 415 Maple Street, that was not recorded. So uh, we didn't know any of this when in fact we received uh, as the owner of the property of 15 Maple Street uh, we came down to town hall and promptly paid uh, the sewer bill and corrected that with our tenant. Um, but somehow an issue occurred somewhere in recording it. Yep. And so we're requesting uh, the return of or the relief of our bill or the penalty and interest of $51.66. I can give a little more background too, just so we, from our end too. Um, so the parcel ID on the check was not correct. Um, so we can now locate their account number in the system based off the name that was on the check. As uh, a phone number on the check, which we called and that number had been disconnected. Uh, we went to the Lister's office to see if they, if they could help us locate their parcel number. We were unsuccessful in that adventure as well. Uh, so in the end, we mailed the check to the address that was on the check, which is the Massachusetts address. Um, and when Tom and his uh, partner Both. found out, they came in. They came mm -hmm. in right away and um, made the made the payment. So that's kind of the whole timeline. So just trying to be clear, this is my daughter and fiance. It's Scott Barger who owns the property. The Barger family own on um, Happy Valley. And Scott Varger wrote the check for the payment, and it was his previous uh, residence. And so, yes, it was an incorrect uh, or not current address on the check and a discontinued phone. Uh, but my daughter came in and paid. And if Mary or anybody else had been there, and recording, and my daughter clearly said 15 Maple Street. And so I'm just saying, I think this is wrong. It, it sounds to me like this is, a, you know, an honest mistake on the town's part and on the person paying part and there was clearly it was paid on time and through a succession of errors didn't get put in the right account errors on both yeah, possibly on absolutely. both parts did not get put to the right account i think we all agree that they they're they tried to pay on time at the end yeah. of the day the check showed up on the right time right. yeah, yeah. Yes. and so that was wasn't be a little located properly so yeah i'll second that Motion to debate and second to debate the interest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. We also have a letter from Patty Will. And I think this one's a different situation. Yeah. You know, yeah. This... And I have to recuse myself. Two days late. Um, I mean, we can't apportion the penalty and interest. It is what it is. Right. You know, no matter how. And if it, someone in my family was one day late, and 
We had a lot of people that Monday morning very angry with us. Remember? The, the grace period is yes. from when you get it. So, um, I would move we deny this request. Okay. Motion been seconded to decline this request. All in favor? Aye. 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 And one recused, so carries. And there's a request to increase um, or to add two three quarter bathrooms to the property at 41 South Street. Um, there's presently one full bath. Um, Going to be using low flow. And there's the fee. Really paid after approval, Eric? Yeah. No, the fee was already paid. Oh, fee was already paid. Oh, fee's already paid. Yeah. oh I see electronic. I get you. Okay. I mean, everything looks yeah. in order to me. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the additional uh, three quarter bathroom to 41 South Street. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay, we have minutes. Um, this. Is yes. something else? No. Um, well, one more thing. Um, for minutes, the the um the joint meeting with um, the um auditors mm -hmm. and um the treasurer was in the in the minutes. Okay. The treasurer was here and he was not in the okay. So we have to add. Yeah. The treasurer. Yes, so he did speak once. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, so we add um, the treasurer's name. Add treasurer's name to the yeah. present list. Yeah. Yep. And also. Yeah, there's always there, so we're just yes. Add, yes. Add, add, add. Thank you. Uh, make a motion, uh, just a motion to approve these. Aye. Motion uh, by Mary. Yes. There a second? A second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded to approve the minutes with the addition of adding Charlie as treasurer to the uh, present list. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I think that's it. I would entertain a motion well, for there's, um, is there someone else, Mark? Um, <laughs> the select board, um, no, the What's board the, of trust, the, the Lester. Yeah, we did that uh, earlier. Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, we did uh, uh, additions. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All right. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye.